Hi, this is Pastor David Rosales of Calvary Chapel of the Chino Valley, California. Today I want to simply extend my greetings to you and to wish you a very blessed Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Speaking of Good Friday, when I say Good Friday, there are many who wonder why we refer to it in such a way. They say, why is it something we call Good Friday? There are various explanations concerning the origin of the term. Some point out that Good Friday can actually be derived from the term God's Friday, which originally spoke of the day Jesus died and was buried. Others say the Friday that Jesus was crucified on has been called Good Friday because it led to the resurrection of Jesus and his victory over death and sin and the celebration of Easter, the very pinnacle of Christian celebrations. For all believers, this single act of love and grace on behalf of all mankind makes us realize that there is a powerful reason to speak of it as Good Friday. On that day, Jesus went through so very much. He went through Judas's betrayal, his arrest, the denial of Peter and his apostles. He suffered the humiliation of being beaten, of carrying his cross, and of being crucified between two thieves just outside of the city of Jerusalem on the hill called Golgotha. As he suffered and died, he continued ministering. The Gospels record what have been referred to as the last seven sayings of Jesus. While on the cross he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. To the repentant thief, he said, Today you will be with me in paradise. To Mary, his mother, he said, Woman, behold your son. And to John, he said, Son, behold your mother. On the cross he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then shortly after, he simply said, I thirst. John records that Jesus, when he was about to die, said it is finished, meaning it is paid in full, it has been fully accomplished. Luke tells us that just before he dismissed his spirit, Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. These final words were part of children's evening prayers for generations and are a fitting way to describe how he, for the final time, said this prayer and placed his head on the cross as his pillow, and he died. I cannot imagine how devastated his followers were. Jesus, the mighty Messiah, the majestic Savior, was dead, hanging limply on a cross made of wood. In terrible grief, they removed his lifeless body, took it to a borrowed tomb, hastily placing spices in the linen wrappings, because the Sabbath was about to dawn, with the intent of returning to complete the task of burial. It was early Sunday morning. The disciples were intensely grieving and sorrowing over the loss of their master. On that morning, Mary Magdalene and a few women made their way to the tomb to finish his burial, but found the stone removed, the tomb empty. Mary was afraid that his body had been removed, that it was being abused by his enemies. She began to weep uncontrollably as she peered into the empty tomb. An angel asked her why she was weeping. She said Jesus' body was not there. She didn't know where to find him. It was at that time that Jesus made it clear, Mary, you do not have to search for me to find me. I've come to you and found you. It was then that Jesus appeared to her and brought comfort to her faithless heart. She had forgotten what he had said. He had taught them that the Son of Man must suffer many things, be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. Like so many today, she had forgotten his words and failed to understand his promise. Yes, he would die on behalf of all mankind, and yes, he would be buried. But death was not able to hold him, and he was declared to be the Son of God by his resurrection. Mary became the first to proclaim that Jesus Christ was and is alive. And the church is the same message, and we've been preaching it for 20 centuries. We do not worship a good teacher, a holy man, or anointed prophet. We worship the king who has conquered death. And though he died, he is now alive, and he ever lives to make intercession on behalf of his followers. Easter is not about bunnies and eggs. It's about a living Savior, capable of forgiving all sins and cleansing from all unrighteousness. He has become the way for us to enter into heaven. It's about life, conquering death, righteousness, obliterating evil. It is about Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. 
who is the only way to the Father. If your church offers Good Friday and Easter services, make sure that you attend such services and that you not only come yourself, but invite. Bring friends. Make it something you do more than once a year. Make it the habit of your life that you might begin to realize that, in fact, for the genuine Christian, Good Friday and Easter are days that actually are celebrated every day of the week. Without Good Friday, we would never celebrate Easter Sunday. Without his death for us, we would never celebrate his resurrection from the dead and the life that was given for us and to us when we receive him. If you have yet to receive Christ, may I encourage you to do so today. Say, Lord, I believe. Forgive me a sinner. I know that Jesus died on the cross. I believe that he rose from the dead. I need him in my life. Forgive me. Come into my life today. If you've done this, make sure that you get to church. Get taught God's word. And if you're able to join us, we'd love to have you with us this week. You can get the information on times of services and location on our webpage at calvaryccv.org. May the Lord bless you. May you live every day for Jesus Christ. This is David Rosales, pastor of Calvary Chapel of the Chino Valley, California.